I've been living out here in rural Mississippi for the past six years now, and it's pretty common to hear a variety of different animal noises. Still, I can never pinpoint an animal to the sound that I've been listening to lately. It's pretty common to hear coyotes like that all the time. And my partner wants to say that this was a coyote, but let's be honest. A coyote doesn't sound like a dinosaur screaming. I only hear the sound at night, but it seems like I'm living in Jurassic Park. If you ever have seen the movie Jurassic Park, there are multiple times throughout each film where a dinosaur roars or makes a noise, and it just has this reptilian sound to it, where if you are blindfolded, and even though the T-Rex sound, for example, is made up of a few different tones, if you've ever watched a documentary on the making of it, it still sounds like it's coming from a large reptile or a dinosaur. I'm telling you this and including this in my email because that's the only way I can accurately describe and explain how this sounds. It sounds nothing like a coyote, and my partner seems to want to disagree with me. I don't know if it's because he's scared or what the deal is. It does not sound natural, and it is not anything that I've ever heard before. We live close to a rather large part of Swampland, so already that's a strike against us. I've listened to all sorts of weird horror stories about people getting lost in the swamps and all the monsters that are supposed to be living in the swamp. Quote unquote monsters. And then I start hearing this at night. I don't believe monsters are real necessarily. I think I'm probably just hearing an unidentified animal, in my honest opinion. Still, scientifically, I've never heard any animal sound as loud as this or matching this exact animal's timbre. I don't know how much you know about giant reptiles that live in swamps, but it almost has this hissing quality. As I'm typing this to you, I'm trying to sit here and think of what animal I can explain to you that would make the most sense. If you've ever heard a Komodo dragon, for example, they have this deep roar, angry groan, hiss sound. That's not quite what I'm hearing, but imagine that amplified with more of a roar, guttural quality behind it. Now you're starting to get close to what I'm hearing. Again, a reptile sounds like a reptile, and there's no mistaking that. I'm sorry if this email is too long. It's just been really scaring me lately. So I thought I would reach out to several different big YouTubers, because with all these stories you guys get sent, I'm sure you get knowledge and are able to clarify some things that might be out there or possibly be unknown to man. A couple of years ago, some friends that we've made since moving up here told us about some Bigfoot encounters they've been having in the same area. Now, I'm not a believer in Bigfoot by any means, but their encounters and sightings were frightening with how they'd retell their stories. I guess Bigfoots run rampant out here, but I didn't know that before moving out here. I thought to myself that it could be a Bigfoot that I'm hearing out here in the swamps at night, but from what I've been told, and from what little I know about Bigfoot in general, they don't sound reptilian. Maybe they do. Hopefully you can answer me and reply. Perhaps it's an entirely new discovered species of animal that's only living here in the Mississippi swampland. I have held on to this encounter for a very long time, and I haven't told anybody about it because I fear I would be mocked and called crazy. But maybe it's about time for me to finally share my experience with the world. After listening to all the stories people have shared with you, it's really encouraged me to step up and share what happened to me back in the late summer of 1979 in Columbus, Mississippi. Your video series about reptilians is precisely what I wanted to talk about. Until recently, the past six months, I had no idea that there was anybody else out there who has seen a creature like I have. People talk about Bigfoot, and even I've heard about a thing called a Mothman, but I never would have guessed that other people have seen large reptilian humanoid creatures just like I did. I thought I was crazy because I thought I was the only one. I have never been into conspiracies or wanting to dive down that rabbit hole, but the more I listen to some of these stories, the more real this all makes it seem, and the more it all brings me back to that evening. 
I could tell you, it was July 10th in 1979, and it was beginning to get dusk. I lived out of a small house that I was rooming with a few friends. I'd only been there for around a few months, and by nature, I'm a small town boy from Colorado. So a few friends of mine moved out here to start up a small business, and they really wanted me on the team to work in their department. I didn't have a job at the time, so I thought it would have been the perfect fit. Rooming with some friends, working at the same position. We could party and work together. What more of a life could you want at only 22 years old? Now, you need to understand something. At the time where I was living, it wasn't fully developed like everything is nowadays with stores and businesses everywhere. Commercial real estate in general has very much expanded in just about every area. Back then, this was about as rural as you can get, with only a few plots of land here and there, and with houses sparsely spread. At the time, there was only a few other houses in the area, with mainly large empty fields and thick woods all around. You bet it was humid as hell. Our drive to work was approximately 25 minutes, which we enjoyed, because that means we could party and be as loud as we want to without having angry neighbors calling the police on us. In fact, that's actually one of the reasons why we decided to go in and rent this house together. If you look out from the front door, it goes out all the way to the front road. And beyond that, it dips down in a small embankment to a thick grassy field that goes on for acres and acres into more and more denser woods. You can call it an empty meadow because the only thing that's really there is probably some marshland and some really, really tall grass. At the time, there was zero development, and the closest house is probably a half mile down the road in either direction. Again, perfect for young kids in early 20s to party without disturbing anybody purposefully. And might I say that at that age, I drank like a pirate. At the time of the sighting though, I was stone cold sober, and I really wanna hone in on that. I was the only one home at the time because my few other roommates were out doing something I don't remember what. Probably out chasing girls like they always did when they weren't working. I was usually the more reserved one. I was outside having a cigarette, and I see this giant lizard stand up from the tall grass in the field opposite of the side of the house. I stared at it intently for a few seconds, just trying to comprehend what I was looking at. Then, it turned its head and its whole body followed. It slowly began walking towards the woodline, which was probably about a few hundred yards. I watched this thing walk all the way towards the woodline before finally entering and disappearing. This thing looked like a Komodo dragon crossed with a human. It was dark and scaly looking and had long arms. It did have a tail, but because the grass was so tall, its lower body was obscured I almost dropped my cigarette and thought to myself i just seen a lizard man. When I was outside smoking my cigarette and happened to see it, I wasn't necessarily looking for anything. I was just kind of spacing out, looking off in the distance, thinking about my day, when this thing rises up out of the tall grass. It was tall though, because that grass is easily three feet tall, and it only came up to about mid-thigh to this creature. That meant that it was probably around seven to eight feet tall, and it had a massive reptile head. I don't know if it actually saw me, or didn't, and just chose to ignore me, but it never looked over at me, and it's not like I was obscured by any trees or bushes. I was out there in the open, this small, tiny, skinny guy. We don't have any trees anywhere on the house of the yard, so I was sticking out if it would have looked over. I don't know if it was hunting or what it was doing, but it was obviously there before I even came out with a cigarette, crouching down in the grass. I was out there for probably five to seven minutes before I saw this thing stand up and walk off. When it walked, it was just like a human. It had a very natural glide with long strides. It was incredibly muscly, and there wasn't, or at least looked to be, an ounce of fat on that thing at all. You could tell by the muscle mass that it was strong. It never made a noise, and I never smelled anything either. After it vanished into the trees, I dropped my cigarette, like I said, and ran inside because even though I was in total awe at what I saw, 
I was pretty freaked out. I had no idea that we had upright walking lizards out here. Like I said, just being a small town boy from Colorado, this was way out of my environment. I didn't tell any of my friends when they got home later that night, and I kind of kept this encounter to myself for a really long time. But I do think about it from time to time. All these reptilian accounts you've been posting over the last few months have really brought me back to that moment, and I figured it was time for me to share mine. Now I know many of the accounts you share explain vastly different creatures, most of them acting very hostile and aggressive. While I don't think I saw any of those creatures you told, I definitely can stand behind the fact that it was an upright walking reptilian humanoid creature. It was very tall and enormous. I never saw it again after that because the following year I moved back to Colorado. Anyway, thank you for letting me share my experience with you. I went for a jog one morning on a nearby trail near where I live, and I came across a series of footprints in the soft clay like mud. The mud was soft and fairly hard, but had a fairly uniform thickness. Each print consisted of three long toes, with a stride around one meter. I'd guess the tracks were between 15 inches in length. I'd guess the creature was around six feet tall. Neither the stride length nor the number of toes was necessarily normal for any creature, considering it only had three long toes, which would lead me to believe it could have been a large bird. But they didn't follow any known animal pattern for toes. It looked very reptilian-like. That to me struck me as odd, because even though this trail was used very much, there are no large lizards out here to my knowledge. And just like that, in that very moment, I saw a flash of quick movement of something large and black nearby in the trees. I saw the back of its head and shoulders move from behind the tree to cross a trail parallel and below me. I got scared and felt like I was in danger. I started hearing a hissing sound and something big moving in the brush. Then, I had the strangest experience I've probably ever had in my life. For the first time, I experienced telepathic communication. No, not like a psychic or something. This was words from something else projected into my own mind. Whatever being was just beyond the trees that I could not see was communicating to me through thoughts. It told me in a dark and deepened voice I needed to leave now and was not welcome in this area. I want you to know that in that moment, it was 100% terrifying. More terrifying than anything you could utterly imagine. I've always wondered about Bigfoot and Loch Ness Monster, ghosts, anything that goes bump in the night. And in that moment, I believe that there truly was something more than what I perceived to be in reality. I felt had I stuck around longer, I would have been eaten by whatever this creature was. But it started stepping towards me as I hesitated, and that's when I ran back all the way up the trail. I wasn't about to piss this creature off, whatever it was. I'm still scared about it to this day. To give you more accurate details of what I could see through the trees, it had really long arms. They were kind of gangly looking. It was kind of slouched over. It looked to be scaly and really dark in color. It was about 20 yards away from me, and it freaked me right out, especially when it started hissing at me, kind of like a large snake does. That was enough for me. I was a student at Texas Tech at the time. Me and my friends would go out at night during the summer months and hang out in this large lake nearby with many, many cattails, as lakes have. We would just sit there, and listen to the bugs and insects and watch the fireflies and enjoy the peace. That's all until one evening that this mysterious creature none of us have ever seen before came into a full view that shook all of our realities to a new level. We had no idea something like this could even begin to exist. 
Out of the water nearby emerged a serpent-looking creature that stood upright on two legs, was stark white, and had the large head of a snake with teeth. It appeared to have a snout as well. It was a very odd-looking creature to behold. All of us, including my friends, were freaking out, trying to hush each other in hopes this thing would not turn and notice that we were watching it. It just walked off into the cattails and out of view. If I had to give estimates, I would say it was no shorter or taller than us, being around six feet, but it was pale white and very serpent looking. It had a long snout on its face and full of sharp teeth. I didn't catch any eyes, but it had a long tail that drug behind it and claws on its hands and feet. It walked perfectly upright just like a man does. It didn't even seem like it was unnatural for this creature to walk like that at all. We were really scared. This was really close to us, but since we ducked out of view, I don't think it noticed that we were there. I don't know if I should call it a snake man, lizard man, or what, but I can tell you it was really freaky looking. I don't like to talk about this much, but... I remember the day very clearly. It was early in the morning. I was loading grain into the tractor, and there was a storm approaching. My brother, who was helping, got in the truck and got to the barn. The barn was on the highway close by, but still a part of our general area of land. Very few homes around, and not many other farms, so there was seldom traffic. I was probably about 15 or 16 feet in front of the tractor. It was very bright out that morning. The tractor lights were on as well. I was a bit of a wildcat and was out looking for any nearby bucks I could see that would break through and walk through this area to get to a large pond just on the other side of a small bunch of woods nearby. In that moment, there was a loud snapping sound. It sounded like massive branches being broken. And then as I looked over, I could see it wasn't a buck emerging. This dark, big lizard man-looking thing stepped out from behind the trees and seemed to be scouting its surroundings. It was way too big to be a person. I mean really big. From the distance I was, I could see its muscles flexing, and there was no way it was a person in a lizard suit. It looked scary and very large. It was ripped and had muscles and a very reptile-looking face and head. Estimated distance was maybe 100 feet away from me, but I saw it at an angle where it did not see me, thank God. It took a couple of steps and then turned around. I carry walkie-talkies with my brother, and since he was in the truck, immediately radioed to him and said to my brother, What the hell was that? Did you see that? He, of course, didn't answer the way I wanted him to. He hadn't seen it as I did. It disappeared back into the trees very quickly, like it did not want to be exposed for very long. I remember thinking how lucky I was that whatever this creature was did not notice me or even act aggressively towards me or at the presence of me. I have never forgotten that day and pray that I never, ever see that thing again. It was a beautiful summer night, and I was on my back porch, which overlooks a small segment of woods, smoking a fine cigar and reflecting on the events of the day. The sun had not fully set just yet, so in the dusk of night, there was still just a pinch of visibility. Plus, I had a few or more lights around my house, so I could see besides just my porch light. Well. I happened to glance up to the right of the woods when I caught a flash of something brown looking or maybe black that was very close to the house. I thought at first it might have been a deer, except a deer doesn't resemble anywhere close to the shape that I saw or the size. My first glance, I thought it was some big tall person in maybe a reptile suit or something. Maybe I was hallucinating, but it moved very quickly. When I first tried to get a better look at it, it appeared to have darted onto the other side of the house where I could not see it. 
I was not prepared to see what I did, shortly, so I stayed standing still, fearing it could be a cougar or a mountain lion at first, and maybe, hopefully I was just seeing things. I have to say at this point, I was a bit shaken up by the initial shape that I saw. I got the feeling in my gut that perhaps this thing wanted to get into my house or to get to me. I did not get a view of it from where I stood, and it wasn't until I actually decided to move off the porch and around to the side of my house after a few minutes that I saw this creature in full view. Even though I had caught a quick glimpse of this thing, I still tried to rationalize with myself it was just a cougar and I was making all of it up in my head. I was thoroughly scared beyond my wits at the sight before me. The first thing I noticed was just how very muscular this creature was. It reminded me of a boxer with powerful long arms. I was looking at a humanoid iguana looking creature standing there on two human like legs and a face that kind of resembled an alligator mixed with a gecko. I dropped my cigar in that moment in sheer terror and this thing turned around and looked at me. It towered over me. It had to have been easily nine feet, if not maybe a little more. This beast was giant. It ranged from a smoky green color to black, and the front of its body appeared to be lighter in color, but had smooth scales all over it. It looked kind of slimy. It had very long fingers with claws at the end of them. Think kind of like an iguana does, where it has overly exaggerated long fingers and claws. That's what it looked like. It just stared at me in the eyes for a few moments, and then turned back around and walked off into the trees in the direction of the swamp and wetlands. I ran inside immediately and called the police. About halfway through the call with the operator, I somewhat came to my senses and just hung up on them, because I felt like common sense came to me, and I realized they're not going to believe me, even if I told them exactly what I saw. I ran over to my desk and grabbed my small pistol, just in case this thing decided to come back. My speculation is that from the area it came from, there's about 8 or so miles of thick marsh and swampland before it goes back into more thick pine forest. It's very close by, and that's the general direction it came from. Look, I have no idea for sure if it came from the marshes, but it also went back in that direction. There is nothing out there that I know of, and I wasn't waiting around for this thing to come trotting back around. I was not hesitant to be able to put a bullet or two in this thing, or three. The question is, what would that even do, if anything? I sat around and waited and it never did come back. Look, I'm usually not the one for toting around the whole swamp monster rhetoric, but where the hell does a 9 foot tall humanoid reptile even come from? When I was a young child, I used to go stay with my aunt every day after school. She, my aunt, lives in a beautiful farmhouse far on the outskirts of my town. She grew up in the blatant countryside and is a true woman of the land. She tends to chickens, ducks. She even has a few cows here and there, though they're just now dairy cows now. She gathers her own water from the rain and is the prime example of a self-sufficient lady, or what other refer to as a prepper. On one occasion, however, as a child, I must have been around 8 or 9. I encountered something terrible and deadly at her house. It was in the garden. The garden is large and has a whole array of flowers. The smells are intoxicating and are enough to make anybody fall for the allure of these flowers. It's in this place that the experience happened. It was springtime, so there was just an ethereal beauty surrounding the entire place. My aunt took really good care of her garden and it looked beautiful. I was a boisterous nine-year-old boy, so I would spend much of my day kicking balls and running through the garden with my younger siblings. I know this experience might sound crazy, and I'm a very logical person. I came across your channel because I just spent evenings scrolling through YouTube, watching funny videos, and I thought, man, 
I wonder if this person would be interested at all in what happened to me as a kid. So I was saying, I was around eight or nine. Well, my aunt had a bunch of chickens out back and wanted me to bring one in so she could slaughter it for dinner. I know, not very animal friendly or vegan, but I can't sugarcoat the story. I remember exactly what I was wearing. A little red t-shirt, yellow shorts, and blue boots. It was a little rainy too, so I had on a yellow raincoat. Before I grabbed the chicken, my aunt wanted me to feed the ducks too in her pond. The pond was near the bottom of the garden and was somewhere that I'd love to go sit and be still. At that time, my father was a pretty bad alcoholic and would often come home and trash the house, screaming at my mom and starting fistfights in front of me, throwing furniture and nearly choking her out. It was extremely traumatic and very toxic for me as a kid especially, and so that's why I spent a lot of my time at my aunt's. I felt that it was a safe place for me, and the place I felt most still and serene was around her pond, watching the little ducks move quickly around the pond. On this day, however, I did not feel peaceful. As I stood there, throwing in little pieces of squished up bread, a great cloud enveloped the sky, and it looked like it was going to start pouring soon. I panicked a little, as my aunt's house is only about 100 yards for the pond, and I knew if I got wet, she would be mad. I continued standing there, looking at the ducks, and noticed something very strange and ominous. In the corner of the pond, there was a little splash of blood, as if one of the ducks had been bleeding. I looked in the pond to see if I could see any more, but no, I didn't. At that moment, I noticed in the corner of the pond, one of the ducks, which were beautiful, delicate, had spots of blood all over its coat. It made me feel sick to my stomach, and I wondered what had happened. Had it been injured? Had someone did this? What was going on? My mind raced for an explanation, but I just continued staring. I attempted to reach out and stroke the duck that had a little blood on its coat but it swam away, as if nervous of my touch. I tried to whisper out to it, baby sounds, it's okay little guy, I cooed. I decided I should probably go in and alert my aunt, and as I stood up, I threw in the remaining bread. I hoped if at least the ducks get some nourishment, nothing bad could happen. Just as I got up, the hairs on the back of my neck stood up and seemed to expand into huge spikes. My hand is even shaky now as I recall this memory. Before me, at the side of the pond, on my aunt's flowers was a large reptile, at least 15 feet long, a massive thing. It had green scaly skin and large spiky feet, which also seemed to have fangs. It was absolutely bewildering and horrific to look at. I attempted to shout, but no words could leave my mouth. I was awestruck by the terrible creature before me. It looked vicious and monstrous, and I knew instantly it was responsible for the blood residue in the pond on the ducks. What was this beast? I thought. Did my aunt know about this? Surely not. She would never keep such a creature. The creature turned to me and stared at me with red slits for eyes, which glared a menacing look, as if it could bolt its tongue out and eat me there and then. I screamed at the top of my lungs and ran back to my aunt. I didn't turn my head until I got in, and the creature was gone. I can only assume that it slithered back to the swamp behind my aunt's pond. She felt my head and could feel the streams of cold sweat running down my brow. She knew I was not lying. It was the weirdest thing, and that night, she'd made me some hot tea and allowed me to sleep with her. Later that year, my aunt died of a sudden heart attack. She was distraught at the time because most of her farm animals were getting sick and dying or just disappearing altogether, which was odd. Environmental health officers and veterinarians said it was the pollution in the air, but I felt this creature had a part to play in it. Whatever this was, it was monstrous. It didn't look like an alligator, but more like a mutated giant lizard but I don't know, 
it's hard for me to describe because I've never seen such a weird looking creature. It was there one moment, and then after I ran away, it was gone. I almost wonder if it was planning on sneaking up on me and devouring me whole, because it was right in a spot that had I not turned to look at it, I would have never seen it, and it could have came right up on me. Anyway, my aunt later on that year had a heart attack like I said, but it was again because I think she was just going through so much stress of losing a lot of her livestock and her prized cows, which were disappearing, somehow, and they couldn't find them anywhere, no traces of their body. So again, I don't really know how to summarize it all, but I just know that I'm not crazy and this did happen to me. I know what I saw, and it was real. When I was at college in the early 2000s, I spent a lot of my time partying. I'm 39 now, married with two kids and immensely happy with my life. I know I drank too much back then. Hey, I may have even smoked a little weed from time to time, but generally, I was a good kid. I'm a Midwesterner, and so I grew up knowing that I wanted to make my mom proud and my dad proud, so I knew how to stay away from the wrong crowd. Well, I tried. But one night, I was in my dorm, and this guy was going around the hallway knocking on people's doors. I heard the muttering, and I had no real idea what he was saying. I was working on my desktop at the time, on an assignment, and hoped he wouldn't knock on mine. But of course he did. This guy had black hair, dark eyes, and a long leather jacket. He had a blank stare and some shady looking eyes, but he held out his arm and showed me something. He had some ecstasy. He asked me if I wanted to buy it, and of course I said no. At the time, weed was the only drug I would have ever tried, and even that made me feel really sleepy. I shut the door in the guy's face. I had the strangest feeling he was angry at me. His stare alone was just cold and clinical, as if he could have killed me there and then and walked away, feeling nothing. I guess to be a drug dealer, you have to separate all your human emotions and just focus on making money. After he left, I went in the kitchen and talked about it with my roommate. He wondered who had let this guy into our dorm. It was totally risky and a real hazard. I mean, if he found a vulnerable girl, he could have drugged and raped her. We felt really concerned, but we didn't want to alert the campus authorities as we had already had a problem after a drunk guy trashed our place. The campus authorities told us if there were any more problems, they would evict us. At 19 years old, I couldn't have imagined anything worse than going back to live with my folks. I was an independent guy now, working hard and enjoying having a cold beer in the evening, waking up when I wanted and eating whatever I wanted. Me and my buddy decided to keep it quiet. We would just keep our eyes open for anything else unusual. We would also tell the rest of the hallway to be alert and not to get too drunk until we could find out more about this guy and who and why he targeted us. That night, I went to bed at around 11 p.m. I was slumped and I had a big test the next day. I woke up at around two in the morning and heard shouting coming from outside my window. I groaned as I got up, my feet touching the cold floor, and pulled back the curtain to see what was going on. The same guy from earlier was outside my room, just about 10 yards from my bedroom. He was talking to a girl who looked to be drunk, and she was sitting with her face in her lap on the pavement. I felt sick. I knew I had to do something. I pulled on my house coat and the first pair of shoes I could find. Even though I just had boxers and a house coat on, I knew there wasn't time to get dressed. This guy was clearly in danger and could potentially die if she took drugs. This guy was a bad guy and I wanted to give him a piece of my mind. I went outside to confront him, but when I turned around the corner to where my bedroom faces, I couldn't see anybody. I couldn't even see the girl. I panicked. I looked around everywhere. At that moment, my eyes expanded to the size of footballs. A huge reptile-like creature was staring at me, standing in the exact same spot as the girl had been minutes earlier. 
This thing looked like a perfect mix of a human being and a lizard in one. This thing was huge and tall, standing at about 10 feet, with slimy green scaly skin and a bald head and enormous yellow eyes. I felt sick, like somebody had shot me right in the stomach. My shoulders became heavy and my breathing became slow, and I honestly felt I was going to collapse from a massive stroke. The creature continued staring at me, and I raised my hands as if surrendering in an attempt to appease this thing, what I would consider a demon to this day, just in case it charged at me. I couldn't take in what I was seeing, but I knew in the darkest parts of my mind this wasn't a dream. The wind was blowing, and I was aware of my sheer vulnerability. My mind raced. What had happened? Was this a prank? Or perhaps I had unknowingly taken ecstasy, and this was all an hallucination? Nothing added up, but I felt mentally well enough. I did not feel like I was high on drugs. I knew what I was seeing was real, and it was just too animalistic and vicious to be another human dressed up. The creature kind of made a scoffing sound at me, and then slowly, without breaking eye contact, retreated back into the bushes before finally disappearing entirely. Well, I say bushes, but they were more like hedges, because they engulfed this entire thing as it stood back into it. I went back inside and poured myself a hot cup of coffee. I picked the phone up to call the police, but then decided against it. I felt I would appear crazy, and I knew if they did a drug test, they might find traces of marijuana or alcohol, and I didn't want to get a bad rap or record. I had a really bright future ahead of me with lots of promise, and I did not want that to be ruined. At the time, I don't know exactly what this was. Was it a creature, or did I see a demon? I wasn't sure. It wasn't until the past few years that with the capabilities of the internet and all the resources I have that I really kind of began looking into it, and I could sum up that I think I may have had encountered some kind of reptilian being, but I don't know, I'm only speculating and I'm submitting this story to you so that you can give me the answers that I seek. So, my uncle is now 79 years old, and unfortunately, he now sits on his deathbed with not too much longer left to live. He's doing what most people do on their deathbed, professing all the bad things they've ever done in their life, all the wrongdoings, and trying to make the best wrongs right that they can. He's well aware he doesn't have a lot of time left, so he shared with us some of his crazy experiences in life, which were heartbreaking and hilarious all at the same time. These moments are very bittersweet, but he shared with my mother and I something very disturbing. For about nine years, my uncle was heavily involved in the mafia. I don't know if the mafia or gang he was affiliated with had any association with the Italian mafia, the Russian mafia, etc but I do know that they were bad guys. He told me that he himself had killed over 20 people for drugs, for money, for sex, for ripping off the mafia. The list goes on and on. It's something that my uncle is very, well, not proud of. And him telling my mother and I was really the first time he's ever really professed it. He went on a tangent and he told us this strange experience he had. I still don't know what to make of it. It's disturbing, but I know my uncle I saw the look in his eyes as he's retelling this story. This is not made up. I saw his genuine reaction as he's explaining this to us. Whatever this was scared him to the bone, even though the story that I'm going to share with you is his story. It is disturbing, but bear with me. To retell this event, we're going to go back to 1972. My father and his mafia partner just got done putting a bullet into this man's head for ripping them off on a drug deal. I think the whole thing involved cocaine, and mass quantities of it to be exact, and I think when he was confronted about it, told them to go F yourself, to put it politely. Well, being the mafia, they're not going to stand for that, so they took care of business, as they like to call it. My uncle and his partner disposed of his body in the only way they really knew how back then, to take his body out to the middle of the swamp and dump it and bury it. Let the alligators and whatever other bugs out there take care of the rest. 
I'll never forget when my uncle looked us in the eyes and said, the amount of times we did this to get rid of bodies and were never caught. It's a number that I myself have lost count of. Anyway, going back to the story, my uncle and his partner are out there in the middle of the night in northern Louisiana, somewhere out in the middle of the swamp. He couldn't exactly recall where, because I don't even think he knew exactly where. I think they just pulled over somewhere and dragged the body out of the car and walked into the swamp a bit with shovels. They were originally going to dump the body, but they thought it would be better to dig at least a loose grave to hide any evidence. My uncle's business partner has this lantern, and my uncle is the one digging the shallow grave. As he's digging, they both begin to hear what he described as a jaguar sound. They both look at each other and just nod their heads to keep digging and to ignore whatever sound it was. My uncle continues to dig, and he recalls this exactly, and he says, quote, I had just shoved the shovel into the soft soil, put my foot down, pressed it in, and I heard my partner scream bloody murder. When I looked over, this lizard, larger than a man, was running at him and swiped his claws, disemboweling him with one swipe. The lantern he was carrying and his intestines both hit the ground at the same time. My uncle had to pause here and catch himself because he was getting kind of emotional. This is where you could tell that the story was getting really traumatic for him to recall to us. He then continued. Without even thinking, he threw the shovel down and sped back to the car at record-breaking speed. While turning around and firing a couple shots off at this thing, he wasn't even sure if it was following him. He was just in a complete state of shock and panic, made it back to the car, and got out of there. He had bigger fears, his partner, now dead, and the body was left exposed in a trash bag, sitting out in the open with a shovel. If caught, their DNA was all over everything. All of this coupled with the fact that he just encountered some sort of giant swamp lizard that killed his partner in one quick swipe. What was he going to say about his partner going missing? What he told us is that the mafia believed that he had some part to play in his partner's death and tortured him consecutively for four days straight. He never exactly told the version of the story that he told us about a swamp lizard coming out and disemboweling his partner. They would have never believed a word for him and probably would have killed him. In fact, my uncle is very glad and humble to be alive. He claims he's very surprised they didn't take his life, but that they would rather teach him a lesson. I had asked him if he could describe what he saw in more detail, the thing that killed his partner, and he just kept saying that it looked like a big lizard with huge teeth and long claws, and that it ran on two legs, just like a person, but was shorter than him and his partner. Which, by the way, him and his partner were pretty average height, 5'10", 5'11", and the dark lighting conditions of the swamp, and the lantern being his only real source of light. It's hard for me to accurately guess how much he truly did see, but it must be serious to traumatize a cold-blooded man like him, a man who had no problems killing you if you came between him and his mafia family. In case you didn't catch it the first time, this was in northern Louisiana, sometime in the early morning hours, I was told. My uncle then veered off to a different story, but I could tell it was hard for him to retell to us. It was clearly a very traumatic event. Since hearing my uncle's story, I've had the chance to check out a few of your reptilian encounters on your channel, just to try and verify if there's any corresponding details that exist between his story and the stories you've posted. While I can't pinpoint anything exactly, it's pretty eerie that other people besides my uncle have seen reptilian creatures in the swamps. I've always known that the swamps were dangerous and home to alligators, but if you would have told me that they were home to man-sized carnivorous lizards, well, that's a totally different thing on its own. My sighting takes place in southwestern Tennessee. This is in a place known as the Cross Creeks National Wildlife Refuge, right alongside the Cumberland River, not too far outside of the small town of Dover, East. I was driving home late one night on the 49. This is where I had a sighting of what I would like to call the Man Iguana from Hell. The 49 is pretty much a straight two-lane highway that travels all throughout the wetlands. There's really nothing too exciting to see, except what I saw in my case was extraordinary, and not in a good way. 
This two-lane highway traverses throughout the wetlands, covered with thick forest on both sides of the road, and again the Cumberland River, right nearby. It's important to keep an eye out for deer, and anything else that the river might draw, like any other nocturnal animals. I'm not a Tennessee native by any means, but I've been around here long enough that I feel pretty confident driving here, especially around nighttime. It was getting close to midnight, so it was pretty dark outside. No other cars on the road at this time. Out of the woods to my left comes a creature, what I called the Iguana Man from Hell. I call it that because that's exactly what it looked like. Every detail of this thing, this being was horrifying, down to every inch. This thing comes out of the forest to my left, crosses the road in front of me, and heads north down towards the river. This thing was so large that it had a dead adult doe hanging right there in its mouth. This creature, so tall, probably around nine feet, and if I was to guess shoulder to shoulder width, I'd say five feet easily. This thing was a hulking lizard. It's like you took Conan the Barbarian and crossed him with a demonic looking iguana. The head was like a human crossed with an iguana, which is where I get the name from. This thing just looked evil. The expression on its face was like a fierce alpha predator. The entire being just looked unnatural, and it was not only large enough, but strong enough to carry an entire dead doe in its mouth like nothing. This thing just trots out of the woods, casually walks across the road, and down off into the river. My headlights lit this thing up in full, because it walked right out in front of my car, but it paid no mind to me, didn't even give me a glance. I'm sure that it felt zero threat from me, or so I guess. It didn't even acknowledge me. I felt a mixture of primal fear and total shock at what I was seeing. This thing looked like an experiment gone wrong and then dumped off into the swamps. It took me a little bit to process that I had just seen a real life lizard man, assuming that there never was such a thing before. Afterwards, I struggled with who do I even tell about this? Who's gonna believe me? This isn't just as simple as seeing a Bigfoot. There's even people in that community that won't believe you if you've seen something else other than a Bigfoot. They were the first group of people that I went to about my encounter, and even they seemed reluctant to believe me. I went through a phase where I somehow convinced myself that I dreamt the whole thing up. But eventually, I came to my senses and realized that this is indeed truth. This was a real life, living, breathing creature. As much as it scared me to death, I've just learned to be overly cautious now about when I drive, especially at nighttime. I do share my story from time to time, but most people don't believe me. And that's okay. I feel like this is one of those situations where it's like, what do I do with the information now that you've told me? So it's more just about being cautious and knowing that there are things out there that we don't quite understand. The takeaway from my story is to be alert as possible and to always be aware of your surroundings. Back in the late 90s, a lady was said to have committed suicide on a portion of highway that borders a swamp-like area crashing into an oncoming car. I don't know if her suicide has anything to do with my sighting, but the fact that the two coincide together just makes my skin crawl. In place of her death, or the part of her road that she shot off and died, is a memorial. You know, one of those typical sides of the road white crosses adorned in flowers and other memorial based items. Well, because of my work, I have to drive this two lane highway every day to and from. I've been very fortunate in these times of COVID-19 that my work has actually been steady. In fact, my workload has actually doubled, if not tripled. And so because of that, I've been very fortunate in these times of COVID-19 that my work has actually doubled, if not tripled, because of other people being laid off and me being kept on. I wanna keep what I do anonymous, so I'll leave it at that. But I'll just say that I help businesses create revenue and bring in more clients. Anyway, I was coming back in the evening time. Keep in mind that because it's spring and summer, it doesn't get dark out till super late. So at this point, the sun was just starting to go down but it was still bright outside. I'm coming up the hill, getting ready to turn, and the lady's memorial is right there on the side of the road. Well, as I'm coming up, my headlights, which by the way I keep on 24 seven, 
because I prefer to practice good driving. They reflected these two lights to the side of the road, directly to my right where the memorial is. Because the reflection of light caught my eye, out of reaction, I look over and I see this lizard looking thing on two legs that's looking right at me and my car. What exactly was I looking at? I'm not sure. Was I seeing a real life alien? Was this somebody in a convincing costume that didn't get the memo that it was not yet Halloween? It had a look on its face like, oh crap, I've been spotted. And I went from doing 45 miles an hour to a slow 15, mouth agape and all. I didn't expect to see whatever this was. It looked to maybe be four to five feet tall with a long tail that drug behind it. I thought it was a person in a costume again, but it looked to be just like a lizard man, a real life lizard man. It was really ugly too. After staring at me for a couple of seconds, as I'm passing, it turns around and jumps right back into the trees where it came from. The longer I spent looking at it, the more I came to the conclusion more and more that this was a real animal. If it was a costume, by any stretch of the means, then it was a Hollywood tier makeup and acting job. Why would anybody be out here on the side of the highway dressed up like that? I know people do crazy stuff, especially in this day and age with YouTube and everybody wanting views and fame, but it just seemed to be too far-fetched for me, and this thing looked far too animalistic to be a person. I didn't want to believe that, of course. I wanted to believe it was actually a person. I saw what I saw, and I cannot argue with myself and say that this did not look animalistic. Even the look in its eye had that wild animal look. So afterwards, I called up my wife immediately and told her what I saw. Because well, her and I tell each other everything, no matter how crazy. I told her that I was worried, and that I wasn't getting enough sleep, and that I was starting to have visions. What I saw didn't look like a vision though. It looked like a real flesh and blood living being. It looked intelligent, and it looked very much kind of like a human does. The stature, the way it carried itself when it walked, everything. It's kept me up at night, that's for sure. And the next few days and evenings, when I would drive past that memorial spot, I kept looking for this thing to see if I could see what I saw. I never did see it again, and I have no idea what it was that I did see. I'm not even sure how to wrap my mind around it because it is just so left field for me. It didn't look like a monster, but maybe a lizard that was exposed to radioactivity that became part human or mutant or something. I know I'm venturing into the realm of comic book reality here, but the thought of it is just so out of the realm of normal. I can't even come up with words to accurately put a picture of what I saw. It was a human reptile that walked just like a man and acted like a man. I find the term lizard man to be the best way to accurately describe this thing. In my earlier 20s, I was an outdoor junkie. I traveled all over the northern United States and even many parts in Canada to see as much as I could. My whole ideology is that life is so short, I don't want to miss what this beautiful earth has to offer me. I had just gotten out of a very toxic relationship for four years with a girl that I probably should have never dated, and to put it lightly, the breakup devastated me. So I wanted to turn my life around and give my time and energy towards being out in nature. That's what really sparked this whole incident. Had none of that ever happened, I wouldn't have had my sightings as I did, and I certainly wouldn't have been at the Algonquin Provincial Park that day. To make a long story short, I sold everything I had, pretty much lived for hitchhiking and walking everywhere I went. It sounds crazy, but emotional turmoil will make you do crazy things, and I wanted to remedy my pain with nature instead of substances and alcohol and things that would make me feel empty. Anyway, enough talk of broken hearts and trying to heal. Let's get on to what happened. I had a sighting of a reptilian-like creature at Algonquin Park in Ontario five years ago. I was hiking by myself and I came to the end of one of this trail. To the right, the trail curves, but there's a sudden drop off. 
if you were to fall, it's about a 50 to 60 foot drop. As I'm approaching this drop off, and before I can even see down, I hear commotion, like something big moving around. At first, I get excited because I think maybe I'm about to see a large bear or something, but I look down and I see this large reptilian thing running on all fours off into the woods. I had to double take because my head, I'm thinking, what am I seeing? I wasn't high, I was not drunk, and I certainly was not on acid. I was sober as a honeybee. I was also the only one around because I did a lot of hikes by myself. I looked around to see if there's anybody else around me that I can motion to ask, did you see that too? Unfortunately, I was the only person around me. I stood there, looking out over the small drop off into the canyon below, if you could even call it a canyon. About a few minutes later, an older man comes walking up the trail and smiles at me and greets me with a friendly hello. I turn to respond to him, but ask him if he's ever seen anything weird up here. He politely says no, and you could tell by the look on his face that he isn't quite sure what I was getting at. I pointed down at the drop off and said I just saw this weird reptile creature running on all fours like an animal down there, and I wanted to know if you have ever seen such a thing. He shook his head and continued on with his hike. Now I was struggling with reality. Did I really see that? Well, I let it go in the moment, and I continued on with my hike. Fast forward years later, and I'm telling my friend about it because we got on the topic of seeing strange animals, and he was telling me about his Bigfoot sighting that he had had. I don't believe in Bigfoot, or really anything that challenges the realm of reality that we live in, but I can't refute my experience, and so I was telling him about what happened to me. He told me that I should go check out this YouTube channel called What Lurks Beneath and that I should submit my story to you. Well, I checked out your channel and I was blown away to find that you had a series, an entire series at that, dedicated to just reptilian cryptid creatures. I learned so much in just spending a few hours listening to these encounters back to back. Crocodilian men, Komodo dragon-like people, very similar to what some of the creatures that I saw. I guess I'm not crazy after all, and I'm obviously not the only person seeing these types of creatures. Unlike a lot of the encounters you feature on your episodes, mine didn't happen anywhere close to a swamp, to my knowledge, but it did happen out in the open. Then, my story gets even weirder. Before I actually wrote up my story and sent it to you, I learned about these large mounds that apparently reptilians are drawn to, and I didn't even know if they lived underground or not, or if they lived in these mounds, but they seemed to be in all these reptilian stories. Well, I reached out to a couple of my friends who have frequently hiked in the Algonquin Provincial Park. I don't know why I didn't think to do this initially when I had my sighting. I reached out to them and asked if they had ever found anything weird in their journey traversing to the park and hiking. This is where my jaw hit the floor. One friend of mine was telling me, which by the way, he's a very experienced outdoorsman, but doesn't know anything about cryptids or certainly reptilians. He discovered what he found were really large mounds, about nine feet tall, just roughly six and a half miles off trail. I couldn't believe what he was telling me. This was after I listened to several of your reptilian episodes and I immediately put the two together. I can't believe what I had heard. I had to sit down and process everything all these years later to realize that this was reality and I actually saw a reptilian being. I never would have thought in a million years they existed, let alone resided in the Algonquin Provincial Park. <laughs>